Yeah, so that's a really strange one. I have two options to show you. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that says the Mythical Ireland cover reveal, which it isn't. This is Live yeah, Irish so Myths that's episode. A really strange one. I have two options to show you. Yeah, now I have suddenly appeared yeah, on yeah. Facebook as well. Yeah, so. Okay, so we now know it's working. Thank you for your patience. There's some sort of a weird technical hitch. I, for the record, did not mention the F word at all since I started live streaming. Uh, there are two options to share the stream. One is last the last episode I had, which was the Mythical Ireland cover reveal. And of course, that is not what I'm trying to show you. Uh, can I change that now mid uh, stream? Not sure that I can, to be honest with you. Let me just see if I can. Yeah, that's really strange. Anyway, if you can tolerate the fact that it says up here, it says Mythical Ireland cover reveal when it should say Live Irish Mits episode number 154, then we're grand. Apologies for the technical hitch. Anyway, let me say hello to Daisy Peters, who's in the house. Hello, Daisy. Welcome along. Welcome, welcome. Mandy McCurl is in Scotland. Falsha. Falsha Roth. Uh, Mandy. Conosatar to ArchDB and Archaeoastronomy Database, which I suspect is the same person, has appeared. Brilliant stuff on Facebook and on YouTube. Sue Prenter said I appeared briefly. I have no idea what happened, but hopefully it's all working now. Um, Joe Butler, <laughs> that was a quick flick. <laughs> yes, well, hopefully it's going to last for an hour uh, now that we've got it all fixed. Uh, fingers crossed. Erica Bow is in the house. Slauncha Erica. Uh, Satatu. John Main is in the house. Uh, John is joining us from the west of Ireland. John, it's great to see you in the house. Yes, Susan, uh, I think we figured it out, hopefully. Uh, Nora Gaffney O'Connor is asking how everyone is. Well, I can only speak for myself. I'm grand. Thanks for asking. How are, how are you? Hope you're still doing the twice daily dips. Patricia Healy Sullivan is in downtown Vermont. Beautiful downtown Vermont, I should add. Karam Gogus says he thought he was the only one who sees black. <laughs> uh, yes, Mandy says it's better now. Hmm. Hopefully we've got it sorted. Is this a Patreon only, asks Snapper. No, it's not. It's a broadcast for everyone. Ah, brilliant. Yes, I'm glad it, it, it seems that I have appeared. Irish Technical Thinker is in the house. Falsha, good evening. Anne Scott Doherty is in the house. Hello, Anne. Nice to see you again. Uh, John McHugh is in the house. Janet Moran is in a mild, partly sunny Boston. That sounds very Irish, actually. Uh, Barb Jordan is saying hello, everyone. Hello, Barb. Uh, Snapper Earl is confirming that he sees me now, unfortunately for you. But look, you can still turn off the screen and just listen to the audio if, if you want, you know. Terilyn Zaharias is in Colorado and says, hello, good evening to you, Terilyn. Always a pleasure. Anne McCallum is in the house also. He says, hello, Anton and the Mighty Two. It's Canadian Thanksgiving Day today, and it's a beautiful sunny day in southwestern Ontario. I am so thankful for so much, including being part of this wonderful community, and especially for you, Anthony, for who you are and for all that you do. Goromila Malago. Thank you, Anne. Uh, a lovely comment. As always, you are always extremely gracious and generous. And it is greatly appreciated. And sure, look, that's the whole reason I do it. Because uh, everybody seems to enjoy it so much. Even the bad jokes. More of which, anon. Howdy, howdy, howdy from Louisiana. Hello, Rex. Good evening to you. Stephen O'Hara is celebrating the fact that we're in business. He says, uh, Yahoo, we're in business. <laughs> uh, and sorry and angelia marie bishop is in florida in the usa good evening to you good afternoon to the floridonians from the Louthians, the drahedians valerie gallagher is here also says hello geogwitch valerie cornelia skipton is in maryland cornelia haven't seen you in a while hope you are in good fettle because uh not that you have to be but we hope that you are and if you're not we hope that you are by the end of the episode. Maria Goodsight says, good evening. Together, all together. Best regards from a magical autumn sunken Koblenz in Germany. Wow, sounds magical. Good evening, Maria. Guten... Guten Tag? No? I never remember what good evening is in German. 
is the stream buffering for everyone or is it just me oh joan i hope it's not for everyone but at the same time i hope that you get your uh, technology sorted if it is you alan curran is saying hello from drawda brilliant stuff alan we'll talk about drawda in a moment Trina Neark is also in the house. Hello, Trina. Always a pleasure to have you along in the library for the reading. Sean Fitzgerald, the wonderful, wonderful, brilliant Sean Fitzgerald. Who is Sean Fitzgerald? Only the designer of the emblem on the cover of Return to Segish. Look at that. A wonderful artist and, as it happens, an absolute gentleman to boot. So there you go. He says he's looking forward to jokes. Don't encourage that definitely not tom lawler is in tipperary we have internet lol <laughs> oh brilliant i hope uh, john McHugh doesn't take that too uh, too badly uh, I, if i turn off the feed i can't draw mustaches says snapper earl yes yes somebody asked me that the other day i was sitting reading a book right it happened to be i don't know if it's count of monte cristo or one of those and they said why is that book so thick? I said, it's a long story. <sighs> oh, yes. Uh, did we have that one already? Oh, we did. I was, I was I, just in case you missed last week's episode, I, I just finished writing my new book. It's called The A to F of Laziness. <laughs> First in a two part series, the second volume will be called The A to Z of Procrastination. I'll start it later. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at my own jokes now. How terrible. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Tom King is in the house. Tom, what a pleasure. A lovely day slash evening at the Boyne Valley. Hope all in good fettle. Dram topped up and rearing to go. Brilliant stuff, Tom. Good stuff. Is the flame alight? Shall we see the burning embers uh, across the valley from your forge? Janelle is in the house. Do you Tuning in again from the Pacific Northwest in Washington State. Excited for another episode with the two of brilliant stuff, Janelle. Welcome along. I forgot to silence my phone. I will do that right now. So that'll be inter an, int an interesting rewatch. People watching that back on YouTube later on will see about two minutes of complete silence on a black screen. Marge is in Turtle Island. Good evening, Marge. Welcome along to Live Irish Mits. Guten Abend. Yes, I keep forgetting that one. Mm, vielen Dank. Uh, Maria, and please accept my apologies. So, before we get started on the story, I should tell you a little bit about Drawda, T or A W D A, which is like a sort of a, a slang way of saying Drogheda, which is the town where I live, and that wonderful project which recently began which is called Drawda, D-R-A-W-D-A, and will feature the incorporation of several murals portraying mythological scenes on walls around my lovely town. I say it's my town. I mean, it's the one I live in. It's not that I own it or uh, that I'm the governor general or something, or that you have to show me identification to get in through its many gates. Uh, <laughs> Drawda is... A very exciting project for me particularly i uh, i know that i've spoken about it but i probably haven't spoken at length if you're not a patron and you haven't seen my patron uh, monthly videos then you, you may not know some of this uh, the project has been in the planning for the past probably around a year and a half uh, although the planning for mythological murals in drahada goes back a lot longer than that in fact the artist who has or is in just in the process tomorrow i think kieran dunleavy a friend who's also the art the mural artist will have finished completed the do you call a two-part artwork a diptych i know a triptych is a three-part artwork um a two-panel uh, mural on the side wall the eastern gable wall of the fitzwilliam court building in dyer street in drogheda one panel featuring Fionn McCool gaining all the, the knowledge from the Salmon of Knowledge as he sucks his burnt thumb. And on the other panel, Finnegus the Wise, the Druid, catching the Salmon out of the Boyne. Two panels that contrast each other in, in colour and in uh, thematically, but which are obviously joined because they're two parts of the same story. I have been greatly honoured and esteemed to have been asked by Drahada Bids, that's the Business Improvement District Scheme, uh, which 
that labels itself as love Drogheda, which I think is brilliant because a lot of Drogheda people over the years haven't realised the enormous potential of the town and the enormous beauty of the town. Well, uh, I, 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 uh, I was asked if I would consult uh, as the the sort of mythological expert, so to speak. And I, I of course, said yes, and it would be a huge honour for me. I can now tell you, uh, in, if you didn't know this, some of you living in Drogheda will know this, but perhaps the international audience does not know, uh, Kieran's double mural, which we count as one mural, is the first of six. Uh, there are five more murals in the planning. I, uh, in the background, I am working on the, uh, shall we say, the the written material, which will inform the artists. Uh, the next five will be completed uh, with the help of uh, the Arts Council and Drehid Arts Centre uh, in Drogheda. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, really excited, to be honest, because we are now bringing that mythology, which is intensely local. Remember that Drogheda is uh, about three, four miles from the sea at Inverculpa. Uh, it is equally four miles from Brunabonia, located halfway between Brunabonia and the sea. In the, in prehistory, all of the people who come up and down the Boyne to build monuments and to visit Brunabonia and all the rest came in and out past what whatever Drogheda was in prehistory. I'm not sure if there was a settlement here. I certainly think there were monuments here in the Bronze Age and possibly even in the Stone Age. Uh, and so it's a, it's a matter of great pride and excitement for me that uh, we are reclaiming the mythology because the history of Drogheda is something that you learn about in school and in the local history books uh, there's a, an intense focus on the fact that Drogheda is a walled norman town uh, the normans uh, uh, you know building the defenses of the town in the 12th and 13th centuries there's great emphasis on the battle of the boyne that took place about a, a perhaps two miles up river between Drogheda and Brunabonia. there's great emphasis on the fact that oliver cromwell stormed the town in 16 uh, 49. There's great emphasis on the fact that uh, Drogheda was a, a British garrison town for the British army. There's great emphasis on the ecclesiastical and the church history of Drogheda. That's all wonderful. It's great. But what Drogheda seems to have forgotten over the years is that there is a vast amount of mythology associated with the area being so close to Brunabonia, having Millmount as the supposed burial place of Amrigan, the Bard of the Milesians, uh, having the river Boan running through the town and lots and lots of other characters and mythology uh, associated with the areas immediately around. So we're reclaiming that now for the town, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, there are big plans. I'm not going to announce them all here. I'm just telling you that there is another five murals. They are likely to be uh, completed by spring of 2022. So don't necessarily expect to see the next mural beginning next week or anything like that, but they will hopefully be completed by then. There is also, I can tell you, the possibility of a, a, a further series of murals after that. Uh, but that's at the moment, uh, we don't have a huge amount of detail about that. In the meantime, greatly excited that a lot of the characters that we've spoken about in Live Irish Myths, characters that I've written about in my books and are featured on the Mythical Ireland website, will be incorporated into the murals in Drogheda. Fabulous stuff. Really delighted. Couldn't be more proud and excited about the whole thing, to be honest with you. Uh, and today, several of us, Richard Moore takes uh, a more significant role in this than he would ever hold his hands up to, in that he uh, in encouraged my interest in mythology when I met him in 1999. We've been friends for 22 years now. Of course, our research culminated, it hasn't culminated, it's still going on, but it certainly uh, reached a crescendo with the publication of Island of the Setting Sun in 2006. And of course, that was reprinted twice and it's expanded and all the rest. Kieran, it was introduced to all this when he came back to Drogheda after studying at, at uh, Art College, and he's a Drogheda man as well. When he met us in 2014 and had his head, as he says, filled with all this stuff and got very excited about what could possibly be done. And even at that stage, uh, we were um, planning uh, uh, large artworks and murals. All I can say is watch this space um, 
I, as I say, just tremendously excited about it. What an honor. Uh, uh, what a brilliant thing to be not just helping people around the world to connect with Irish mythology and giving you some insight into that uh, through the live streams, through the publication of books, through the Patreon, through the website, the podcasts, the blogs, all of that. But now to be bringing that home to a local audience that may not be aware of a lot of this stuff. I said today to Kieran and, and Richard and, and Trevor Connolly, who's the bids manager, I said that I would love to do a poll in Drogheda to find out how many people in Drogheda know where the salmon of knowledge was caught. I reckon a lot of them would say the Boyne, but do they know that it was caught about four uh, miles upstream of Drogheda at Linfake, which has been identified uh, as as that uh, uh, one of the pools in the bend of the Boyne uh, between Rossnery and Nouth and Newgrange. And I reckon a lot of local people don't don't actually know that. And so it's like this story is known all over Ireland and all over the world. And yet there are, I think at last census, there are 40 plus thousand people living in Drogheda. I would, I would say less than half of them, I'd say less than quarter of them know that the Salmon of Knowledge was caught in the locality of Drogheda. Brilliant stuff. So this is a chance to educate as well, to, to, to tell people the story visually, but then in other ways to relate the story to them. And as I say, watch this space, because there's a lot more to this project than, uh, although it's a magnificent thing, there's a lot more to it than murals on walls. Uh, and I'm excited to keep you informed about that. Before I start the reading, um, I'm just going to make sure I didn't... Uh, somebody's sneaking in the back and thinks I'm not going to mention them. Who is that on the Mythical Ireland community? Let me see this in this moment who that is. Mavanway Millward, there's no sneaking in the back here now. Take your seat. <laughs> Hope you have a nice brew. Uh, Laura O'Reilly is in Madrid, up the M-U-N. Well, good evening uh, to you, uh, Laura. You're very welcome along. Um, there's somebody called Fury Mittens saying I must be feckin' invisible. Well, you're not. We see you now. And hello there. Did I miss anyone else? Elaine Dent, Lingenfelter. Hello there. <laughs> Brandon Nutley's in the house. Hello, Brandon. There's another Drahada man. Brandon's good to see you. Hope life is treating you well. The Mun. Oh, Laura means Ballymun. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So that's obviously the home territory. Up the Mun. Right, I see. Brilliant stuff. Helena Breen is in the house. Hello, Helena. Larissa Kama is here also. Hello, Larissa. And yes, I have my cuppa, says uh, Mavanway. Well, we'll be checking it now just to see exactly what it is. I hope there's no crater in there, you know. Uh, anyway, it's about time we probably started uh, reading. Um, just to see if I'm missing anything. Um, any evidence of Viking structures there, says Brendan. You mean in Drogheda? No, no, no evidence that I can immediately think of. There is mention in the annals of a Viking fleet being located upstream uh, in the vicinity of Fiex Pool up at Rossnery. Uh, and there is also, don't forget, the, the major settlement, which was uh, Lindochal at Anagassan, which is only about 10 miles northeast of Drogheda on, on the Louth coast. So in the vicinity, and of course, they would have raided inland from there. They raided uh, Slain. The monastery at Slane several times. In fact, there was a round tower uh, once upon a time at Slane, which is completely gone now, which is unfortunate. Wouldn't that be magnificent? A round tower on the top of the hill of Slane, you know. Rins Ranger is in the house as well. Good evening to you. Welcome along. Robin Edgar says, Happy Canadian Thanksgiving to Annie and all Canadians here today. Yes, indeed. Happy uh, Canadian Thanksgiving. Fury. Is it supposed to be furry mittens or is it fury mittens? I'm not banned. Not yet. Anyway, unless you do something to get banned, you know. John Main is telling us he's in Belmullet in County Mayo. Brilliant stuff. Don't forget, I should throw in a mention of the uh, revised and expanded edition of Mythical Ireland uh, will be published uh, next month. I'm just working on the proof and getting it to print with the publisher at this moment in time. Also, please don't forget to order, pre-order your 2022 Mythical Ireland calendar. Uh, they will be available for dispatch probably, I would, all going well the last week of October. So in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be sending it to print. Uh, 
Anyway, last week we were talking about Tolan McCarroll. We gave the first half of the story. He was relating to St. Finian of Moville uh, about his origins. He had come to Ireland with the Partholonians. It was related to Partholon, and all of Partholon's people were killed by a plague, and Tolan was the only survivor. He had lived through all the ages and was relating the early history of Ireland to St. Finian. We also discussed how Tuan's story uh, makes him very, very similar to Fintan MacBokra, who in, in another version of Laura Gawala, the Book of Invasions, comes with an earlier landing uh, uh, with Kezair, the granddaughter of Noah, uh, before the flood. Flood overtakes them, drowns the, the, the women, uh, Kezair and her, her, her 50 female friends, and the three men that they came with them, uh, two of them are killed. Fintan is the f- sole survivor, survives as a, a salmon and a hawk and an eagle, and uh, likewise, uh, like uh, uh, Toam, lives for a long time and later claims to have existed for five and a half thousand years and is able to recite uh, the entire history of Ireland. Uh, which is uh, really uh, brilliant. Alan Curran wants to know, any update on the log boats you found during the summer? Actually, uh, they're in the current edition of Archaeology Ireland, if you haven't seen it. Um, absolutely worthwhile getting out and getting it because there is a seven-page spread about the log boats uh, written by Dr. Niall Gregory and myself which explains a lot about them. So that's the best place for a comprehensive update. Alan is in the current issue of Archaeology Ireland magazine. We're also doing a talk for the Louth Archaeological Society. I think it's on 23rd of November. I'm not sure if that's a members only talk. That's the only thing. Uh, but um, that's the Archaeology Ireland is definitely the place to go in terms of an update. Uh Sylvia Sanchez is saying happy Thanksgiving Day to all the Canadians. I didn't know Canada had this date. I didn't even know that either. Sylvia wants to know where can we get that magazine. Uh, it, it's published by Word, isn't it? Wordwell. Wordwell. Hang on, like, just see if this... Uh, uh, it's probably difficult to get if you're not, you know, subscribed. Of course, you could just send a... Uh, you, could, you could send a, uh, an email to editor at archaeologyireland.ie uh, actually, the subscriptions manager, uh, subs, subs at archaeologyireland.ie, and um, see if you could perhaps purchase a copy that they could send out. I'd say that's probably the easiest way to do it, actually. So there you go. Any, any calendar for down here, Anthony, in New Zealand, says Tom Shanahan. Well, the calendar is sort of like a, a, a one for all calendar, as it were, with all the important dates in it. But yes, absolutely. And we post worldwide. So no problem. Anyway, I shall get on with the story. Superenter, I... D- what? Excuse me? Did I not mention you earlier? I thoroughly uh, beg for your forgiveness. Superenter's in the house, everybody. Give her a big bull of bus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Chapter... We're on chapter six. I'm going to have to... Uh, silence the uh, the facebook uh, announcements there i dreamed and i saw myself changing into a stag in dream and i felt in dream the beating of a new heart within me and in dream i arched my neck and braced my powerful wind wi- my powerful limbs even brilliant stuff tom thanks a million i awoke from the dream and i was that which i had dreamed I stood a while, stamping upon a rock, with my bristling head swung high, breathing through wide nostrils all the savour of the world, for I had come marvellously from decrepitude to strength. I had writhed from the bonds of age and was young again. I smelled the turf and knew for the first time how sweet that smelled, and like lightning, My moving nose sniffed all things to my heart and separated them into knowledge. Long I stood there, wringing my iron hoof on the stone and learning all things through my nose. Each breeze that came from the right hand or the left brought me a tale. 
a wind carried me the tang of wolf and against that smell i stared and stamped and on a wind there came the scent of my own kind and at that i belled oh loud and clear and sweet was the voice of the great stag with what ease my lovely note went lilting with what joy i heard the answering call with what delight i bounded 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 light as a bird's plume powerful as a storm untiring as the sea of course this is uh, uh brilliant that uh, uh, a brilliantly descriptive uh, passage here in which toan as uh, s s you know had seen himself transform into a stag in a dream and then awoke to find he was transformed into us into a stag here now was ease in 10 yard springings oh, wow imagine being able to, 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 to yes that's i i take it what he means by that is that's 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 how far he could spring in one leap 10 yards with a swinging head with the rise and fall of a swallow with the curve and flow and urge of an otter of the sea what a tingle dwelt about my heart what a thrill spun to the lofty points of my antlers how the world was new how the sun was new how the wind caressed me peter woods is joining us uh, he's in Monaster Boyce, just up the road. Hello, Peter and Stacy. Herman Lawrence is in sunny Ohio. Spread a little bit of sunshine around the world. That's what we like to do. With unswerving forehead and steady eye, I met all that came. The old lone wolf leaped sideways, snarling and slunk away. The lumbering bear swung his head of hesitations and thought again. He trotted his small red eye away with him to a nearby break. The stags of my race fled from my rocky forehead or were pushed back and back until their legs broke under them and I trampled them to death. I was the beloved, the well-known, the leader of the herds of Ireland. Uh, Somebody is asking what version I'm reading. I'll tell you who that is now. That's on the mythical Ireland community. That is Mavanwe. Uh, I'm reading, yes, I probably should have said that in case uh, uh, it's James Stevens's Irish fairy tales. Uh, and this is obviously a modern, uh, it's a facsimile reprint. Uh, originally published in 1924 by Macmillan and Company. Company uh, this edition published in uh, 1995 uh, by Colour Books Limited Dublin copyright the estate of james stevens yeah, it is it's it's it is really lovely isn't it? it's very well uh, very well written and at times i came back from my boundings about era for the strings of my heart were drawn to ulster and standing away my wide nose took the air while i knew with joy with terror that men were blown on the wind a proud head hung to the turf then and the tears of memory rolled from a large bright eye uh, thank you sue printer for anybody interested in in the previously mentioned uh, archaeology ireland magazine for those interested check the app store search archaeology ireland available on subscription brilliant stuff thank you for that sue brilliant thank you at times at times I drew near, delicately, standing among thick leaves or crouched in long, grown grasses, and I stared and mourned as I looked on men. Now Nemed and four couples had been saved from that fierce storm, and I saw them increase and multiply until four thousand couples lived and laughed and were riotous in the sun. For the people of Nemed had small minds, but great activity. They were savage fighters and hunters. I thought the, the fact that the, they were riotous uh, singled them out as definitely early Irish. No doubt about it. But one time I came drawn by that intolerable anguish of memory. 
and all of these people were gone. The place that knew them was silent. In the land where they had moved, there was nothing of them but their bones that glinted in the sun. Old age came on me there. Among these bones, weariness crept into my limbs. My head grew heavy, my eyes dim, my knees jerked and trembled, and there the wolves dared chase me. I went again to the cave that had been my home when I was an old man. One day I stole from the cave to snatch a mouthful of grass, for I was closely besieged by wolves. They made their rush, and I barely escaped from them. They sat beyond the cave, staring at me. I knew their tongue. I knew all that they said to each other, and all that they said to me. But there was yet a thud left in my forehead, a deadly trample in my hoof. They did not dare come into the cave. Tomorrow, they said, we will tear out your throat and gnaw on your living haunch. Sounds like quite the threat, doesn't it? Vicky Wallace Othell is in the house. Hello, my lovely friends. Yes, indeed. Hello to you, Vicky. Welcome along to Live Irish Myths 154. Can you believe it? Hello to Evan and to Chilly. If you're watching, hello, Evan. Hello, Chilly. A very good evening. Good afternoon to you from Ireland and all our best blessings to you and uh, Vicky and her lovely family. Uh, thank you, Irish technical thinker. Um, I think it helps sometimes just to slow down, doesn't it? You know, sometimes it helps. The fact that I split this into two means I have to read it slower or else it's going to be a short episode. And I think the slower reading is nice, you know. Chapter 7 Then my soul rose to the height of doom, and I intended all that might happen to me, and agreed to it. Tomorrow, I said, I will go out among ye, and I will die. And at that the wolves howled joyfully, hungrily, impatiently. Chile has a new friend, a stuffed banana slug. Is that the, the stuffed banana's name, slug? Hello, slug. <laughs> uh, very good of you to join us. We're delighted to see you in the company of uh, Chile and Evan. Brilliant. I slept and I saw myself changing into a boar in dream. And I felt in dream the beating of a new heart within me. And in dream I stretched my powerful neck and braced my eager limbs. I awoke from my dream, and I was that which I dreamed. The night wore away, the darkness lifted, the day came, and from without the, the cave the wolves called to me. It's a little bit like a grim fairy tale, isn't it? I actually have the grim, the entire collection here. It's 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 it, it kind of reads a little bit like that. It's like a you know, oh oh oh, uh, what was the one? Um, what big eyes you have? What big ears you have? What, what big teeth you have? You know, was that was that little red riding hood? Was it? Uh, or was that the? It was wasn't it? Anyway, apologies. I'm getting distracted. And without the caves, the wolves called to me, Come out, O oh skinny stag, come out and die. And I, with joyful heart, thrust a black bristle through the hole of the cave. And when they saw that wriggling snout, those curving tusks, that fierce red eye, it actually says that red fierce eye. That red fierce eye. The wolves fled, yelping, tumbling over each other, frantic with terror. And I behind them, a wild cat for leaping, a giant for strength, a devil for ferocity. A madness and gladness of lusty, unsparing life. 
a killer, a champion, a bore who could not be defied. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Almost reminds me a little bit of the story uh, 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 of the, the black pig uh, told in many parts of Ireland. I took the lordship of the boars of Ireland, the lordship, no less, lord of the boars. Wherever I looked among my tribes, I saw love and obedience. Let me just do a quick recce on the old page count here. See exactly how, what sort of pace I need to go at. Ah, we're glad we're in good time. Whenever I appeared among the strangers, they fled away. Ah, the wolves feared me then. And the great grim bear went bounding on heavy paws. I charged him at the head of my troop and rolled him over and over. But it is not easy to kill the bear. So deeply is his life packed under that stinking pelt. Wow, that's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, just going to close that down. Those old Facebook beeps are proven to be a bit distracting, eh? He picked himself up and ran, and was knocked down, and ran again blindly, butting into trees and stones. Not a claw did the big bear flash, not a tooth did he show as he ran whimpering like a baby, or as he stood with my nose rammed against his mouth, snarling up into his nostrils. I challenged all that moved, all creatures but one, for men had again come to Ireland. Semion, the son of Stariath, with his people, from whom the men of Dovnan, or, or uh, Domnan, you might say, uh, but uh, with the Lenition, uh, Downan in modern Irish. Downan and the Fervolog and the Galleon are descended. These I did not chase. And when they chased me, I fled. Often I would go, drawn by my memoried heart, to look at them as they moved among their fields. And I spoke to my mind in bitterness. When the people of Partholon were gathered in council, my voice was heard. It was sweet to all who heard it, and the words I spoke were wise. The eyes of women brightened and softened when they looked at me. They loved to hear him when he sang, who now wanders in the forest with a tusk he heard. Keith is saying good evening, hello from Holland. You're very welcome along, uh, Keith. Very good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Who is Helen? Somebody else has arrived, have they? Helen, yes, indeed. There you are, Helen. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Don't worry about being late. Just find a chair. Get yourself comfortable. <laughs> Brendan says men are always the problem, upsetting the balance. Yes, yes, yes. Chapter 8. Old age again overtook me. Weariness stole into my limbs and anguish dozed into my mind. I went to my Ulster cave and dreamed my dream and I changed into a hawk. I left the ground. The sweet air was my kingdom and my bright eye stared on a hundred miles. I soared, I swooped, I hung motionless as a living stone over the abyss. I lived in joy and slept in peace and had my fill of the sweetness of life. And gathering by the fact that he was able to hang motionless suggests that he was a wind hover, like a, a kestrel, which is the creature that uh, Fenton McBorkra transforms into. And it is the one uh, raptor, it is the one uh, bird of prey, uh, sh shall we say, uh, that is able to 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 sort of flutter in the in this hold its position in the sky while it looks down for prey and then will swoop you know sometimes 20 feet down sometimes 100 meters sometimes you know three or 400 meters whoo, 
you know but the fact that it's able to stay motionless that it's not like for instance like a like a buzzard or a kite you know or an eagle that you know slowly swirls around in, in circles the great uh, ability of the kestrel compared to its other raptor cousins is this ability to just literally hang there in the same place so apart from this little fluttering of the wings all the creature on the ground sees is a speck and because it's not moving uh, the threat is not perceived as being or maybe it doesn't see the threat at all or it's not perceived as being as great i lived in joy and slept in peace and had my fill of the sweetness of life during that time Bjohach, the son of Irvanel, the prophet, came to Ireland with his people, and there was a great battle between his men and the children of Semion. Long I hung over that combat, seeing every spear that hurtled, every stone that whizzed from a sling, every sword that flashed up and down, and the endless glittering of the shields. And at the end I saw that the victory was with Irvanel. And from this, from his people, the Tua Dei and the Ande came, although their origin is forgotten, and learned people, because of their excellent wisdom and intelligence, say that they came from heaven. These are the people of Fairy, F-A-E-R-Y is how it's translated here. All these are the gods. For long, long years, I was a hawk. I knew every hill and stream every field and glen of Ireland. I knew the shape of cliffs and coasts and how all places looked under the sun or moon. And I was still a hawk when the sons of Meal drove the Tua de Danon under the ground and held Ireland against arms or wizardry. And this was the coming of men and the beginning of genealogies. Then I grew old, and in my Ulster cave close to the sea, I dreamed my dream, and in it I became a salmon. The green tides of ocean rose over me, and my dream, so that I drowned in the sea and did not die, for I, woke, I awoke in deep waters, and I was that which I dreamed. I had been a man, a stag, a boar, a bird, and now I was a fish. In all my changes I had joy and fullness of life, but in the water joy lay deeper, life pulsed deeper. For on land or air there is always something excessive and hindering, as arms that swing at the sides of a man and which the mind must remember. The stag has legs to be tucked away for sleep and untucked for movement. And the bird has wings that must be folded and pecked and cared for. But the fish has but one piece from his nose to his tail. He is complete, single and unencumbered. What a coincidence that we're talking about the salmon on the day uh, that the salmon of knowledge or the the penultimate day of the salmon of knowledge mural being completed he turns in one turn and goes up and down and round in one soul movement how i flew through the soft element how i joyed in the country where there is no harshness in the element which upholds and gives way which caresses and lets go and will not let you fall for man may stumble in a furrow, the stag tumble from a cliff, the hawk, wing-weary and beaten, with darkness around him and the storm behind, may dash his brains against a tree. But the home of the salmon is his delight, and the sea guards all her creatures. Really wonderfully put, isn't it? Now, of course, I suspect that the original Irish is not quite as lyrical. Uh, and, and that this has been, uh, shall we say, augmented or, uh, you know, um, I'd say some license has been taken, but it is beautiful nonetheless. It is a beautiful rendering of the tale. 
I became the king of the salmon. This is chapter nine. And with my multitudes, I ranged on the tides of the world. Green and purple distances were under me. Green and gold, the sunlit regions above. In these latitudes, I moved through a world of amber, myself, amber and gold. In those others, in a sparkle of lucent blue, I curved, lit like a living jewel. And that reminds me so much of that phrase that I kept using in Return to Segish, the, 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 the silvery flash of light. And in these again, through dusks of ebony, all mazed with silver, I shot and shone the wonder of the sea. I saw the monsters of the uttermost ocean go heaving by, and the long lithe brutes that are toothed to their tails, and below where gloom dipped down on gloom, vast livid tangles that coiled and uncoiled, and lapsed down steeps and hells of the sea, where even the salmon could not go. I knew the sea. I knew the secret caves where ocean roars to ocean. The floods that are icy cold, from which the nose of a salmon leaps back as at a sting. And the warm streams in which we rocked and dozed and were carried forward without motion. I swam on the outermost rim of the great world, where nothing was but the sea and the sky and the salmon, where even the wind was silent and the water was clear as clean grey rock. And then, far away in the sea, I remembered Ulster. And there came on me an instant, uncontrollable anguish to be there. I turned and through days and nights I swam tirelessly, jubilantly, with terror wakening in me too, and a whisper through my being that I must reach Ireland or die. I fought my way to Ulster from the sea. Ah, how that end of the journey was hard. A sickness was racking in every one of my bones. A languor and weariness creeping through my every fibre and muscle. The waves held me back and held me back. The soft waters seemed to have grown hard. And it was though I were urging through a rock as I strained towards Ulster from the sea. So tired I was. I could have loosened my frame and been swept away. I could have slept and been drifted and wafted away, swinging on grey-green billows that had turned from the land and were heaving and mounting and surging to the far blue water. Only the unconquerable heart of the salmon could brave that end of toil. And of course, this is true because, as previously mentioned on some of the episodes, uh, in re especially in relation to when I was writing Return to Segish, the Atlantic salmon, which is the one that enters the Boyne Salmo Salar, uh, goes off to its feeding grounds in the northern Atlantic around Greenland and, and is able to find its way back to not just the river where it was spawned, but the very pool in which it was spawned to start the cycle again and create the next uh, uh, the next life with a, a new spawning. A most remarkable creature, the salmon. A most incredible, incredible creature. Uh, and uh, oh, there's a quote in Return to Segish about. Um, I'll read to you, in a, and maybe I'll read it to you in a moment. But there's a quote in Return to Segish about, you know, ha having, despite being in awe of all that humans have achieved, there was something about. The salmon's ability to do that to navigate back to this precise spot of its birth um that uh that 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 made me uh you know stare and or wonder in admiration um 
that I thought it was it was far greater a far greater miracle than anything that the human race had ever had ever uh, achieved. The sound of the rivers of Ireland racing down to the sea came to me in the last numb effort. The love of Ireland bore me up. The gods of the rivers trod to me in the white curled breakers so that I left the sea at long, long last. And I lay in the sweet water in the curve of a crannied rock, exhausted, three parts dead, triumphant. <laughs> exhausted and almost dead, but at the same time, triumphant. <laughs> I love it. Ah, uh, yes. It sounds like a story an Irish man would tell, all right. Um, plenty of um, poetic license uh, taken, which is perfectly fine. And um, just let me see if I can find this. Um, if I can't, I will press on quickly. Don't worry, I won't. Uh, um, but sorry. Uh, yeah, I think this is it. I read this before. Sorry, apologies. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll leave that to the end because I'm not uh, too far off. We won't because it'll only sort of disturb the story too much. I'll read it at the end. Chapter 10. Delight and strength came to me again, and now I explored all the inland ways, the great lakes of Ireland, and her swift brown rivers. What a joy to lie under an inch of water basking in the sun, or beneath a shady ledge to watch the small creatures that speed like lightning on the rippling top. I saw the dragonflies flash and dart and turn with a poise, with a speed that no other winged thing knows. I saw the hawk hover and stare and swoop. He fell like a falling stone, but he could not catch the king of the salmon. I saw the cold-eyed cat stretching along a bow level with the water, eager to hook and lift the creatures of the river. And I saw men. They saw me also. What coin had a salmon on a tinkle tink once? No, it was the ten pence coin, wasn't it? It was the Irish, the, the old punt uh, before euros. It was the ten pence coin, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. They saw me also, as in the men. They came to know me and look for me. They lay in wait at the waterfalls up which I leaped like a silver flash. Wow, there is the exact term that I have used throughout Return to Segish. I never read this before. This is uh, fantastic. Wow. Yeah, brilliant. They held out nets for me. They hid traps under leaves. They made cords of the colour of water of the colour of weeds. But this salmon had a nose that knew how a weed felt and how a string they drifted meat on a sightless string. But I knew of the hook. They thrust spears at me and threw lances which they drew back again with a cord. Many a wound I got from men, many a sorrowful scar. Every beast pursued me in the waters and along the banks. The barking, black-skinned otter came after me in lust and gust and swirl. The wild cat fished for me. The hawk and the steep-winged, spear-beaked birds dived down on me, and men crept on me with nets the width of a river, so that I got no rest. My life became a ceaseless scurry and wound and escape, a burden and anguish of watchfulness, and then... 
I was caught. And this is the last chapter of the story, which is chapter 11. I hope you've been enjoying it. I've certainly enjoyed your company. Um, chapter 11. The fisherman of Carol, the king of Ulster, took me in his nest. Sorry, the fisherman, singular. The fisherman of Carol, the king of Ulster, took me in his net. Ah, that was a happy man when he saw me. He shouted for joy when he saw how when he saw the great salmon in his net. I was still in the water as he hauled delicately. I was still in the water as he pulled me to the bank. My nose touched my nose touched air and spun from it as from fire. And I dived with all my might against the bottom of the net, holding yet to the water, loving it, mad with terror that I must quit that loveliness. But the net held and I came up. Be quiet, king of the river, said the fisherman. Give in to doom, said he. I was in air and it was though I were on fire. The air pressed on me like a fiery mountain. It beat on my scales and scorched them. It rushed down my throat and scalded me. It weighed on me and squeezed me so that my eyes felt as they must burst from my head. My head as though it would leap from my body. And my body as though it would swell and expand and fly in a thousand pieces. The light blinded me. The heat tormented me. The dry air made me shrivel and gasp. And as he lay on the grass, the great salmon whirled his desperate nose once more to the river and leaped, 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 even under the mountain of air. He could leap upwards, but not forwards. And yet he leaped, for in each rise he could see the twinkling waves, the rippling and curling waters. Be at ease, O king, said the fisherman. Be at rest, my beloved. Let go the stream. Let the oozy marge be forgotten, and the sandy bed where the shades dance all in green and gloom, and the brown flood sings along. And as he carried me to the palace, he sang a song of the river, and a song of doom, and a song in praise of the king of the waters. When the king's wife saw me, she desired me. I was put over a fire and roasted, and she ate me. And when time passed, she gave birth to me. And I was her son, and the son of Carol the king. I remember warmth and darkness, and movement and unseen sounds. All that happened I remember, from the time I was on the gridiron until the time I was born. I forget nothing of these things. And now, said Finian, <laughs> you will be born again, for I shall baptise you into the family of the living God. So far, the story of Tuan, the son of Carol. No man knows if he died in those distant ages when Finian was abbot of Moville, or if he still keeps his fort in Ulster, watching all things and remembering them for the glory of God and the honour of Ireland. That is the story of Tuan McCarroll, as related by James Stevens. A wonderful uh, rendition. I hope you'll agree. Really hope you enjoyed that. I know I did, definitely. Uh, I, I, I thought it was uh, uh, fabulous. I'll read a little bit uh, from. I think. I think it's just. Uh, well, perhaps you'll get uh, why I sort of got so so excited there. I'll read a little bit from Return to Sagish, and you'll see how how much it is informed. Certainly, uh, by the Salmon of Knowledge, uh, the story of Finton to a degree. Uh, I wasn't quite so familiar with the story of Tuan, but. Uh, now that I've read it, I'm greatly excited. I want to read it again. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, Return to Segish, if you have it, I'm reading from page 172, which is the chapter called uh, A Meeting at the Ford. Uh, and I can't go too far uh, because I, 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 uh, I don't want to give away the end. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, this is from Return to Segish. Uh, let's call this a uh, end of episode bonus.
Um, yeah, that was a really, really beautiful. Uh, perhaps that is what is needed with the Irish mythology. You know, we've read a lot of translations over the past 150 or so episodes. Um, Brendan Nutley, good luck to you. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. Up at 5 a.m. God, love you. Get some sleep. No problem. We'll see you soon. Um, yeah, we've, we, we've read some translations, but perhaps what is needed is, is are these translations that do take a little bit of uh, a poetic license uh, and, and where the prose is, 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 not, is not, you know, direct translation of what's there, but is, is lyrical and, and, and moving, you know, and uh, sort of heart-rending at times, isn't it? It's really brilliantly written, I have to say. Really, really thoroughly enjoyed that. Can't remember the last time I read uh, An Irish Myth uh, where the translation uh, was 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 uh, so moving, you know, really brilliant, beautifully done. Anyway, this is called a meeting at the Ford from Return to Zegish. Hope you enjoy this little bit of an end of, uh, as I say, end of episode uh, thrill. Uh, <laughs> you, you can decide that for yourself. Um, it's not for me to say. There will be sweet music and a great song on the day of your homecoming. And although it will be tinged with sadness, your passion for Segish, your desire for source will overcome all. You left as a child, but will return as a man. Of course, he's talking. Uh, I am. This is me addressing the salmon, you know. Listen, listen for the voice. Hearken, hearken to the birth of song. The one who comes to Inverculpa as a salmon in a pool will be the one to herald your return. The one who is a wind on the sea will sing for your homecoming. He will be an ocean wave and a roar of the sea, a powerful ox, a hawk on a cliff, a dewdrop in sunshine, a boar for valor, but most importantly, a salmon in the pool, a salmon in the pool, a salmon in the pool. What land is better than this island of the setting sun? What better place to die than the spawning pools of your first imaginations? As I look down from the bridge, perhaps I will see deep down a sky full of stars and a new world, and my heart will know gladness. In the quickening twilight, I might catch a glimpse of something down there in the depths of blue. A flickering light, perhaps. A light from an old world. The old well is still in you, although you have wandered far from the pools of your first emergence. Listen, listen for the voice. Although silently you might vie against the current of your own life, you might in the dimness of the water perceive that golden hue of love light in the evening twilight. Swimming ever onwards, your silvery scales flickering in the way. You might wonder how it was that spawn became smolt and smolt became the great salmon of the deep ocean. It all happened so fast and the days glimmered overhead, oscillating from day to night and from night to day again. The greatest of your concerns was the one that you pushed to the back of your mind. That day, when emboldened Smolt raced for the sea at Drogheda, the cormorant said he would see you again. It would be a bittersweet return. Did you imagine it would come so soon? The race of your ocean days now over. There is just one race left to run. The run to Segish. Leaving Inverculpa back then, as you first breathed the salty water and knowing that you would have to seek to return, how would you find your way back to the gleaming boyne? And this is the paragraph that I mentioned uh, while I was reading the story of Toan McCarroll. This is the paragraph uh, uh, about the, the miraculous return of the salmon. And when I think about that, Something in me recognizes the astronomer in you, the navigator, the surveyor. With all that we have done and achieved as humans, 
speaking to each other across the world through thin air, sending men and women into space. I feel hopelessly inadequate as a creature of the wild world in the presence of one who is able to find Linfeach and Segish, having wandered out into the deep oceans of the world. I bow to you, O holy salmon, at the bridge over the ford, as you make your final return to the pools where you were first spawned. You must, like me, have eyes turned towards heaven, for the one who loves the stars and is at home with the night will never feel lost in the wide world. Coming back now at the place where the tide turns near the old ford, I will tip my hat and shed a tear for a dear old friend who is making his last journey under the sky of stars. Standing at the bridge, I might wonder which of the stars has guided you home. In your sea of water, was there a sea of stars? In the deepest pools of your journeying, have you seen starlight? What is visible down there in the darkness for a salmon with an eye for the heavens? When you ascended out of Segish, what was the first star that you saw? When you descended for your first great embarkation to the deep waters of the Atlantic, what was the last star you saw before you took the plunge? What in your Piscean nature called you to the shore of the Sea of Stars and called you astronomer? Did you see yourself reflected in the great river of the sky? From pool to ocean the smolt went, a tiny sparkling light in a vast ocean of shining things. What single flickering light matters a jot among a scintillating array of stars whose light strives to us through the darkness for billions of miles? Perhaps that faint and obscure star was the one that guided you home. The one that we ignored because we were chasing grand patterns in the sky. I saw two fish swimming out of water, two fish of the air. But you just saw stars, the stars of your better nature. Was it a less familiar form that called you to begin the journey home? Hearing a birth of song, did you perceive the poet warrior standing with his foot, his bright kneed leg on the shore of Eridanus? You heard his voice as a wind on the sea out in the distant waters of your magnificent ocean. As a wave of the ocean, he lapped over you then as you watched Orion dip his toes in the sea. And he roared, he roared in such a way that you've never heard the ocean roar. And it shook you and stirred you and called you to remember the cormorant at Drogheda and the heron by the shore at Oldbridge and the angler at Slain and the otter by the weir. The song of Amergen called for a dance, a dance of delight, a dance of delight. Am Gwehi Mur, I am a wind on the sea. Am Ton Trehan, I am a wave of the ocean. Am Fuam Mara. I am a roar of the sea. The birth of song was a powerful ox for you, crossing the river at the ancient ford, his herdsmen ushering him to the summer bully and fresh pastures. The birth of song was a hawk on a cliff, an ancient voice of the wild, the one that told in sacred story the adventures of the restless creature called man, the restless creature called salmon. In all our migrations, the hawk in us calls us to remember home. Our nest, her bosom, bring us home, mother. Full of knowledge, you are returning to the place where your thirst for knowledge began. The boar, brave for the rut, eats the mast from the forest floor and readies itself for the next confrontation. The salmon in the pool eats the sacred knoe and finds itself hungry, hungry for the ocean. The meagre pool is transformed. It becomes a lake on a plain, and all the water that streams from it seeks the ocean. Seeing the possibility of an ocean life for itself, 
the smote dreams of those eager waterways, the ones that lead from innocence in the shade of the hazel grove to a life of enlightenment in the open sea. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the short chapter of Return to Segish called A Meeting at the Ford. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I cannot read Return to Segish. I cannot read it to the end without crying. I think I told you that before. I am incapable of reading it to its conclusion uh, without a stream of tears running down my face. I hope it has the same effect for you uh, uh, and that uh, that, that is uh, for all the good reasons, uh, not that you are completely distressed or that it is terrible or anything like that. Um, yeah, that was uh, really enjoyed that tonight. Um, thank you, Joan. Uh, John was one of the early reviewers of Return to Segish and uh, clearly really loved it. Um, yeah, it was it, it, it was it was it was it was a lovely review, uh, Joan. And uh, Sirisha says the same thing. I, I cried several times reading it. Brilliant book. And I think um, as look as a writer, I mean, I'm, uh, James Stevens has really lifted everybody's hearts over the past couple of episodes. We finally have a translator who also has the ability to craft a story and, and uh, you know it's that when you translate directly from irish to english sometimes you lose some of the magic and he has imbued this story with magic return to segish i would like to think is the first time in in my career as a writer where i have actually managed to stir the reader to the extent that you know they come away feeling that they've been on a a, a, a great adventure it's not a very a big book and it, it it won't take you all that long to read it you know you could probably read it in several hours maybe if you're a quick reader you might read it in two or three hours uh, but it's lovely it's a lovely thing i think as a writer because you experience that as a reader when you read a work of fiction and it, it instills in you great emotion where you feel great joy and you feel great sadness that if a book moves you to that degree the author has done the perfect job, haven't they? Really, you know. Anyway, uh, thanks. All very nice uh, comments. Um, delighted um, uh, that you enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Just a, a just a brief mention. Um, of uh, patreon that uh, if you'd like to support mythical ireland uh please you might consider becoming a patron and uh, you get rewarded for that with lots of stuff that uh, early and exclusive access to bits and pieces photographs blog posts uh videos um, yeah etc uh, and the monthly update uh, which is patron only exclusive um uh, and also, uh, don't forget uh, to uh, keep an eye on the website. Uh, Pre-order, if you wish, your uh, uh, revised and expanded Mythical Ireland. It's mythicalireland.com. Go to the gallery and shop. And in there, you'll see books. And in there, you'll see calendars. So uh, you can uh, you can order everything in the one place. And as I said, we post worldwide and all the books are signed. No, I'm not sad, uh, Joan. I'm I'm actually not sad. I'm just yeah. It's nostalgia. It's definitely there's something remarkable about Return to Segish. Uh, it was written, handwritten, and uh, it, 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 I told I think I told you before, probably several times that, that I never planned planned it in any way. I just just wanted it to emanate, and it emanated. I think in, in the most remarkable and beautiful way. It's it's it's, it's quite a human story but it's obviously based or uh, it's based around the salmon and other as you know you've read it but for those who haven't it's based around the salmon and some of the other uh great characters of um uh, irish mythology particularly those associated with the boyne um and i can't help but feeling you know when when i when i sort of have made that very strong connection with the myths i can't help feeling that I'm resuscitating something that was thought to have been lost in retelling the stories, you know, that once you're retelling them, they're not lost. No tradition. Well, who, who was it that said it was one of the great uh, American Indian, uh, native Indian chiefs um, 
who said that no tradition dies until the last person who honors it dies. And so, um, yeah, we're keeping it alive. And I'm, I mean, the murals are just another extension of that, you know, uh, breathing new life into the old stories. And perhaps one of the things that I will do in the future, uh, certainly something I would give consideration to, uh, is to is to retell some of the stories, but to do it in the vein of James Stevens, um, you know, to, to, to make them beautiful. Uh, they're not that they're not beautiful already, but to retell them in such a way as uh, as to emulate uh, what James Stevens has done, you know. Yeah, it's a it's a funny one, um, uh, uh, Marcus, but um, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's like I, I, I you you could listen to a thousand YouTube videos by authors who are giving advice on how to write. And there's just this thing that you pick up on all the time. It's the same with readers, readers of books. The one thing that you f sort of pick up on with fiction is that, you know, that I think if it doesn't move you, it hasn't done its job, you know, that it has to, has to move you, you know. No, I didn't. You didn't hear a cat, um, Joan. What you're hearing is Saskia. When Saskia wants to get out or when she's hungry, she lets these yelps, you know, high-pitched yelps. Uh, she's really funny. She hardly makes any noise at all. But when she either when she needs to go to the toilet or when she's very hungry, she she makes these noises and uh, it may uh, sound like a cat in the background. Uh, Indigenous Day today says Helen. I did not know that either. Uh, are very important that we mark that too. Absolutely. Bev, Bev is looking for more stories. The stories of Angus. Well, I think we did, didn't we? Um, uh, Ashlinga Ingeso was uh, uh, pretty sure um, one of the earlier. We we'll, I'll dig. I'll just check. I'll just double check that. And of course, Angus also features in the stories of uh, Dagda being or Elkmar or um, uh, Dagda and Elkmar being uh, dispossessed of Newgrange. Um, Thank you, Mavanway. Glad you enjoyed yourself. Um, great to have you along for the story. And McCallum, thank you as well. And uh, yeah, glad you enjoyed it. And of course, that's the thing to do. It's brilliant because we're on two platforms. If Facebook is giving you trouble, go to go to YouTube and vice versa. Um, and that, and um, I only cottoned on to that after about a week uh, at the beginning of the series in March of 2020. I realized you should be streaming on YouTube as well as Facebook. And it seemed to do the trick. Could do Irish ghost stories for Halloween, says Irish Technical Thinker. Yes, indeed. And in fact, I have several books featuring Irish ghost stories. So that is definitely something we could do. Absolutely. Yeah. Like Tuan. Somebody says, like Tuan. Your dog has turned into a cat. <laughs> He's, she's merely transforming. She's going through the transformations. Anyway, no problem. Uh, all the very best to you all. Hope to see you soon. Can't promise that we'll do three live streams that, like we did last week. But you never know uh, what will uh, transpire. Um, uh, I have been uh, mulling over the, um, the conversation series. I'm delighted to announce that I've been speaking to one guest. Uh, actually, two uh, at least two in the past week uh, who will be uh, more than happy to come on uh, the show uh, over the winter time so we will be recommencing the conversation episodes as well um so uh, brilliant stuff rins ranger says i was honored to be what was that i skipped i was honored to be handed my father-in-law's shillelagh yesterday he passed away about six weeks ago and i will tell the kids the myths and pass it on brilliant stuff I'm very sorry uh, for the loss of your father-in-law, but that's lovely. And again, it's like a physical reminder. Uh, it, this is what we do. We're like relay racers. We pass on the baton to the next generation and hope that they will tell the stories with the same zest and, 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 and zeal and, and enthusiasm as we do. In the meantime, all that remains for me to do is to say slán go fól, good uh, bye for now, íko a kolosov, and uh, the most important one, of course, as ever, is the tog go buggy. <laughs>